Tonight on Bondi Rescue, cyclonic swells pound the coast. Fun for some, disaster for others. But he went in the cave and he didn't come out. The blind terror of a man who can't swim. Help me! You're on, I'm trying to! Brooke faces her own fears. And the lifeguards play international diplomacy with the Indian cricket team. It's a hot and sticky summer's day, and the cool waters of Bondi beckon. But swimmers looking for a relaxing swim are in for a surprise. Mother Nature is dishing up something special, with reports of huge storms off the Queensland coast. We've got a good um, old-fashioned cyclonic swell running with a beautiful day. We haven't had that for years and years, so the combination of the beautiful weather is going to bring the people out and the big surf's going to really test the lifeguards and test their skill. And all the lifeguards are really on their toes today. You kind of stay on a bit of red alert because you, you know the potential. The swell is so powerful, even the shore dump can throw up some nasty surprises. And there's no guarantee you're safe on the sand. In the dangerous conditions, the boys in blue are kept busy plucking swimmers from the surf. The first casualty emerges after being badly dumped. I can stand a lot of pain, it's not a problem, I hope so. so. The man's shoulder is dislocated, but he's surprisingly stoic. I have to, to, to put my, my, my arm inside my... With the, to the rest of my body, I think, yes. So Marcus is on holidays from Germany. Something says he's used to a high pain threshold. As the crowd grows, so does the sick list. A twisted ankle. And some nasty collisions between soft skin and hard rocks. Meanwhile, Marcus is heading off to have his arm put inside the rest of his body. In the big swell, lifeguards direct swimmers to the relative safety of the flags. But it's also where the best waves are. Board riders are muscling in as well. The two are a dangerous combination. Look at this boat. He's, if he's not in the middle of the flags going right, yeah. he cannot be doing that. Bondo Central. Boys, you obviously seen that guy just go right smack into the flag then. Kind of don't really need this at the moment. Excuse me, mate. Just further over for us. I don't think they'll be too happy about trying to get moved, but we've got to look after the swimmers before anyone else. Everybody out there on the glass board, you've got to help us out. You've got to move down south. At the moment, we're dealing with probably 50 to 60 board riders in the middle of the flags. We've got 150 swimmers out in the flags at the moment. You see this, this good four or five foot waves breaking and they're just not listening to us. The danger becomes apparent after a boogie boarder is struck by a surfboard. Then, as lifeguards struggle to clear out surfers, a man is reported missing. He told his friend he was going for a quick dip between the flags. It's been half an hour and he hasn't returned. Well done. <laughs> James is 44. He's in Sydney for his friend Ian's wedding. Is he a good swimmer? Like, um, I wouldn't say a good swimmer, not. But he's... He's jet-lagged too, and they had quite a bit to do with us. He can swim, but he's probably not that great a great swimmer. Yeah, copy that, mate. Uh, we had Dino on the screen, he'd probably have a look as well. James has now been missing for 45 minutes. There's no sign of him between the flags. Dino searches the surf zone. Jet ski to uh, North Bondi. I've asked uh, a lot of swimmers out here and he doesn't seem to be out here. See, the problem is we've got boards out there. Anyone could have just whacked him and they wouldn't even know that they're all these beginners. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even if, like, the blokes come up and a board's gone back and smashed him straight in the head. It's now an hour and a half since James went for a swim. Usually people get down pretty quickly. The longer it gets, the... I get... I guess more frantic the family, friends get. Finally, relief. Yeah, 
Got him. Down. Ian turns up with his missing friend in tow. It turns out James hasn't even been swimming. I just went for a wonder without telling anyone, so I panicked him a bit. And then, um, then I bumped into a friend, actually. Strangely My enough. ex-wife. Yeah, his ex-wife. Yeah. He's a friend of mine, but not his. <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Fuck so I was chatting much. to her. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you had drowned. Yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> actually got a date. <laughs> so, so. You what? Relief for some, but then a real emergency. Kerbock spots a swimmer struggling at the south end. Hey, Hoppo, you got those two straight in front of you there. That guy's struggling. Yeah, I'll, I'll go in. Yeah, he's going under, mate. Help me, please. Hang on, hang on, hang on. No, mate, don't panic, don't panic. Help me, please. You're all right, mate, you're all right. Settle down. <laughs> just lie there, lie there, just lie there. No, just lie there. <laughs> Outside the flags, a man is in serious trouble. His panic makes matters worse. You're right, I'm trying to. Head lifeguard Hoppo is struggling to keep him on the rescue board. Can't get this guy in. That's it, panicking out there. Reedy paddles out to help, but the man's friends decide they need rescuing too. Three men are in trouble, and only two lifeguards with rescue boards. Yeah, Ryan, right, hey, Bob, you guys there with Hoppo, mate? This guy's struggling. With all the rescue boards in use, Bobby commandeers a local surface. Listen, come back, listen, you're lying your stomach, okay, and face to the shore. Right. We're stretched. Uh... It's pretty heavy, there's no one else on the beach at the moment, so we've got to try to get the boys back into their positions again and, you know, if something else happened, it's, uh, it's pretty dangerous. The first man is transferred to Reedy's larger board, but Reedy is having no more success calming him down. Two of the men are paddled in. Hang on. Finally, the first man calms down and is brought to shore. Simron is a student from India. He's here with friends enjoying a summer of cricket in Australia. They just help me. I'm very thankful for him. Actually, mate, we don't know how to swim. That's why. Actually, we, are getting we come here first time. It's my first time. I'm coming to Australia. That's a very beautiful place. I'm coming to Australia. Come to Australia in uh, last week. It's very beauty. They, they are here. Otherwise, it may be. I will not uh, talk with you. They are very brave. Well, I don't know. I was trying to get him calm him down because he was. He get on the board. Had him on the board, and then he just started panicking and jumped off and tried to swim for it. Bit he, of shock does that to you, doesn't it? it sort of mess. I could tell in his know. eyes. He was. He just didn't even. Um, his eyes just. He didn't want to. Um, just want to be back to shore. You know who was who and. Yeah, it's not easy with that big bikes on that little board, is it? No. <laughs> Facing south, Bondi is spared the full brunt of northern swells. But neighbouring Bronte and Tamarama are being pounded. Lifeguards have closed both beaches to swimmers. But what's dangerous to some is a godsend to others. For a few brave souls, including pro surfer Jesse Miley Dyer and off duty lifeguards, it's party time. So, the biggest off surf Tamar, for sure. I'm um, probably 
had a couple of waves that are a tiny bit bigger overseas, but um, it was good. I had fun. <laughs> a lot of the boys out there, like, <laughs> there's a lot of the boys out there just, be yeah, about five of us. Harry's and we put around earlier, and as is out there, there's both skis out there. And... Other surfers are out of their depth and fast discovering why Tamarama has a reputation as one of the most treacherous beaches in Australia. When you get the big set coming in, say, what the hell am I doing here? It's, uh, yeah, some guys are doing very well, but uh, my legs are still shaking, you know? So, it's, uh, it's really, um, it's big, it's, it's huge. Azza patrols the dangerous no man's land between the broken waves and the cliff face. I just got caught on the inside and it ripped my leg off. What's over here? The only thing more distressing than a looming cliff is a broken board. He'll be spewing there 700 bucks up there. Uh, it's one wave. That's all I got, one wave. But yeah, you can see it's pretty messy. Fun though, eh? Fighting against tons of water can be futile. Experienced locals give in and ride the Bronte Express, letting the powerful rip sweep them south towards Bronte. Come round to Bronte. We've got a guy uh, duck diving. Hopefully he'll come round to you guys. Yeah, come on, H. Uh, oh, I see him. Did he just come round the swings? Bronte clear. He'll be good, mate. Come round with the car. All the water's moving around to Bronte. The people are, don't want to go. They want to go back to here where they started from. They go against it the whole time. They, but as soon as they go with it, they're fine. Then, a surfer fighting against the waves is rapidly losing the battle. He risks being swept into a notorious cave in the cliff face. But he went in the cave and he didn't come out. In cyclonic swells, a surfer is swept into a cave just south of Bondi. In these conditions, rescue access to the cave is impossible. H is sent to try and help. Miraculously, the surfer emerges. H guides him across the rocks before the next wave crashes in. H knows how lucky he is. It's good it's only mid-tide. It's like a half-moon tide. So, but when it's higher, it can fill. The whole cave fills with water. So you go in for somebody, next minute you're over your head in a fish tank, and it's not nice. I just got stuck in the bowl out there. It's a section where it's hard to get out of. Tried to cut back into the beach for my last wave to get back in. Couldn't make it, the current was too strong and just got swept up on the rocks there. It's lucky I uh, come out with just a few little scratches. Could have been worse and my board's all right too. On days like today, the jet ski is a crucial rescue tool. But negotiating the half ton machine in cyclonic swell is no easy task. Three months earlier, on a rough winter's day, lifeguards do specialised jet ski training. Points to remember. Keep the bow pointing out to those waves. Keep your hands on the handlebars. When a wave is about to break, hit your square in the chest, duck your head. If it's coming backwards, it's going to land on shallow sand. Where do you want to be? Right away from it, OK? One, two, three, let's go! Brooke nervously waits her turn as trainee lifeguard Maxie, just 16, gets his first go on the ski. The pickup is excellent. Then Maxie's sudden turn to avoid a wave has an unfortunate result. The patients disappear. Let's go back with it. Now it's Brooke's turn. She's a master on a rescue board, but managing a big machine in big surf is a different matter. You can have really good board and, and um, tube and good swimmers and good board paddlers and such, and some people just don't have that mechanical twitch to be able to drive or reverse or do whatever. Instead of taking the waves head on, Brooke attacks them sideways and risks a rollover. I 
a bit flustered actually. <laughs> when you're in the wave break zone and you are going to cop the lip right in the face, you know that one you just turned around on then, I thought you are going to charge that one, I thought I would have given you a gold medal for that because you probably would have survived it. Keep the throttle on, you will punch through the wave. Whoop gets back in the saddle and has another crack. She learned to flirt so much, okay, from that last one. She got right into that turn then, she put the power on and she made it. She listened to us, mate. Yeah, she got, she got this little whip, but she's got better every single go. What well up, Rookie? See the difference? These things got a lot of power. Don't be afraid to use it. Last time when I nearly rolled it before, didn't give it enough, so I gave it all I got this time. As the cyclonic swells linger, Hoppo decides it's time for Brooke to do her first real patrol on the jet ski. It's my turn on the jet ski. I don't really want to go out there. I'm sure all the boys will be watching, so we better get it right. Hate you. Oh, you're a little bit nervous, boy. I am. You're not going to hit anyone. You're not going to hit anyone. You're not going to get it. You're going to be good. In two seasons at Bondi, Brooks managed to avoid patrolling on the jet ski. Now her time has come. She's fine. She just gets a little bit overawed. She doesn't want to get, doesn't want to screw up, you know. So yeah, but she's okay. You ready? Just twenty liters of fuel for you. You need to burn it. All right, she'll have a go. She'll be all right. She knows she'll be sweet once she gets on it. Just needs a bit of confidence. There's no backing out now. With the tide out, the rips are running. The little, little knees will be knocking it. So. <laughs> Brooke patrols the surf zone. Then she spots a swimmer in a rip at the south end. Got some help! I don't even know if you're gonna get you. Where are the back guys? There's two, there's one out further, there's one on the inside. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get right on, right on, right on, hop up! Got it. Huh? She's, yeah, she's yeah. sweet. She's good. She got you. Yeah, well done, Brooke. Well done, Brooke. They're done pretty easy, eh? Yeah, once you got on, it was all right. Stay to me first rescue. No one's dead. <laughs> if you need anyone. And I saved a few people, so... I'm quite proud of myself. Bondi is a stage. Over the years, it's become renowned for celebrity cameos. Rocky, how are we going to be the white guys, would you? Steve Irwin, Richard Branson, Paris Hilton, Snoop Dogg, to name a few. But today, there's a very different headline act. The word's out. The Indian cricket team is coming to Bondi. It's just days after the controversial second test, smack bang in the middle of one of the game's greatest crises. But a challenge has been thrown down. India versus the lifeguards in a one-day match of beach volleyball. We're setting up and they're warming up. It's delicate international diplomacy. Should the lifeguards press for a crushing defeat or allow the Indians a face-saving win? The world's press are poised. It must be your first time uh, with uh, any cricket team? Or? Oh, first time we've had a um, cricket team down here uh, doing stuff on the beach with us. Hoppo decides to play hard. After the, uh, the Australian cricket team won the way they won, um, we've got to hold our end up now and pretty Absolutely. much take it out and have a clean sweep. Sachin Tendulkar. Yeah, and uh, he's uh, the, 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 the 
Okay. Actually, Harbhajan Singh. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, Harbhajan Singh's three-match suspension doesn't apply to beach volleyball at Bondi because <laughs> he's out there. <laughs> Soft hands. You take the ball with right. this part. <laughs> this the off-duty lifeguard's secret weapon is volleyball pro Olga. Right there was the captain here. She's going to tell us call all the shots. Whatever she says goes. The state of play at the moment is the, uh, the Indians are out there warming up. And there are a couple of boys down there warming up. And to be honest, I'm a bit nervous because people are meant to have some sort of ability. The boys are terrible. India wins the toss and starts play from the Paddington end. <laughs> Yeah, it's Ricky Benno here down at Bondi Beach. Commentating the 2008 World Series of Beach Volleyball in the cricket team versus the Waverley Council lifeguards. So far, it's been a one sided affair with a tall bloke from the Indian side smashing everything. Section 10 Dukas out there, cover driving like a mad boy. Could this be time for some old fashioned sledging? This guy is just like annihilating. Australia's national pride is at stake. points now, the boys, so, so that's all right, at least they're getting there. <laughs> Match point. The lifeguards go down fighting. The boys in blue may have lost the match, but perhaps they helped mend an international crisis. Steve Montelli, like for five years, and he actually gets to meet him, so it's pretty cool. Next time on Bondi Rescue, all the way from Hawaii to Bondi. A new lifeguard's baptism of fire. We've got a couple of things in store for you today, Kyle. A theft on the beach leads to a chase in the park. Come on, mate. Look, hey. And Maxie's first rescue. Oh, back of the head. Maxie just got smashed there. Yeah.